Hey, Psyker here. I know it's been a little while, okay, a long while, but I've had to deal with this really bad cough that has lasted literally since Thanksgiving. It's January as of recording, um, and it's just, it's really sucked. But the cough is gone, so we can get right back into making videos again, uh, starting with this one. So without further ado, here's a tutorial for my gold farm design. Hope you enjoy. Hi, I'm Psyker, and today I'm going to show you how to build this gold farm right here. This farm produces over 1,400 ingots worth of gold per hour, and it gets you to level 30 within a minute and a half. Now, before we get started, one major note is that this farm, to run properly, requires four Impaling Five Tridents to work properly. If you don't have four Impaling Five Tridents, you won't be able to do enough damage to the mobs to actually kill them all faster than they're spawning. If you don't have enough, just go ahead and block off some of the portals until you can get a hold of the right amount of damage. But assuming that you have access to impaling and tridents, let's get right into it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is figure out where you're going to put this thing. Now honestly, there aren't really any requirements for where this thing should go other than the bottom of the portal has to be above Y0. Okay? So for instance, with these portals here, if I had the bottom just one lower, where standing on it would have you at one, then they wouldn't work. <clears throat> so the bottom, the blocks here at the bottom have to be at Y1 or above. Other than that, you can put this thing anywhere. Uh, because of the way Piglin spawning out of the portals works, it won't be affected by any mob caps. You don't have to build it out of range of spawnable areas if you don't really want to bother with that, because the mob cap won't mess with it. Oh, and then there is one thing with what direction this thing is pointing. Unlike most farms, the direction this thing points will actually slightly change how it's built. When a piglin spawns out of a portal in this way, it will come out on the east side on north-south portals, and it will come out of the south side of east-west portals. So when we're building the farm, we're going to build the portal frame first, and then we're going to check and see which side actually has the uh, piglins. Once you've decided where you want the farm to go, you can just use these two chests as a reference for your materials list. The materials list is here. It is also going to be in the description and in the pinned comment. When it comes to solid blocks like uh, po this polished deep slate or this wool, you can substitute those out for any other solid blocks. And for transparent blocks like glass, you can substitute those out for any other transparent blocks for the stained glass. Regular glass, you can substitute anything. It doesn't matter. But, you know, I like to have glass there because it looks nice. Once you've finally gathered all the materials and you know exactly where your farm is going to go, now it's time to place the first portal. Now, where the portals are placed relative to the AFK spot is the only thing that's changed by which direction the farm is facing. Because remember, on north south portals, the piglins will be falling from the east side of the portal. And on east-west portals, the piglins will be falling from the north side. This difference really is to make sure that the drop chute stays in the same spot without messing with the design of the top half of the farm. So if you're in your AFK spot facing your drop chute and the farm is east or south, then you're going to be building up from two blocks behind the AFK spot right here. But if your farm is facing north or west, then you'll be placing from the front of the AFK spot right there. So remember, east or south, you're going to be placing the first portal behind the AFK spot. North or west, you're going to be placing the portal on the front of the AFK spot. So to place your first portal, you're going to go 10 blocks above the AFK spot. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that 10th block above the spot will be the bottom of your first portal. The frames of the portals that we're going to be building will be 22 blocks wide and 23 blocks tall. So, to widen out the base here, we're going to be adding 10 blocks to each side. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Adding those to the two blocks we had there originally brings it out to 22 blocks wide. Next, you're going to build the sides. And these are going to be 23 blocks wide. So we're going to count this as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. And you're going to make the other side the exact same height. 
And once you've got both sides done, you're just going to close off the top just like this. And once you've built your portal, just go ahead and light it and break it a few times just to make sure that it's working. And if you have it, the portal in the correct position, then this first portal will have the piglins spawning towards the AFK spot. If you built it above the AFK spot, they'd be falling on this side towards it. And if you've built it here, then they should be falling towards the AFK spot on that side. Next, you're going to build the next three portals. Now, the portals will have three blocks in between them, just like this. And they will all be the same size. And once you've built all your portals, just go ahead and light them all again, just to make sure that they all light properly. If they don't light, that means you've probably built them too large, or you have a block missing, or there's an extra block in the portal somewhere, just like that. So just make sure they're all clear, and all fully built, and the right size, and try again, and they should light. Now it's time to build the water streams. First, light your portal a couple times, see which side the big ones pop out of, and that's the side the water streams will be on on every portal. With that information, you're going to build an outline for your water streams, right here. From here, you're going to place three stairs under each one of these sets of three blocks here, with blocks on the sides of those stairs to stop water from flowing out. And you're going to do that on both sides. From there, you're going to start building the paths the water will flow on top of. So, from the front of each of these stairs, bring it forward one, two, three, four, five, six, and then forward another one, two, three. And you're going to build this in front of every single one of these stairs. So each one of these sets of three will look like this, where you'll have a six by three platform and a three by three platform, just like that. And just like before, you're going to do this on both sides. Then two blocks below this, you're going to build another path going all the way through just like that. Before we go any further, I'd like to punch a hole for the drop chute in this bottom path here. So no matter which way your farm is pointing, go to the side where you have a water stream that only has one portal next to it. And you're going to go from there, one, two portals. And you're going to put the drop chute right here with part of it on the other side of the portal facing away from that first water stream. And you can punch that hole right here. Next, we're going to go and build up the first wall right here with stairs at the bottom and regular blocks going all the way up just like that and blocks on the sides to block the stairs just like that. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Then you're going to put walls all along the bottom, just like that. And fill in this gap in between each stream right here. Then from here, you're going to fill in the walls on the sides of each water stream spot. And you're going to extend the walls down here, right where the drop chute is going to be, just so it's all nice and even. Now that all the walls are done, let's place in the signs. So you want four right here, blocking the entrance to the drop chute. Then you're going to place signs on this layer, all the way along the top.
And once you have all these signs placed, you can go ahead and place water in every single stair that you've put in this area so far. And once you're done, the water stream should look something like this. Go ahead and use this time to check the bottom for any leaks. And if you find any, make sure to double check that you've placed blocks in all the right spots and plug up any leaks you find. And just for aesthetic purposes, I like to place blocks right here on the end of every water stream. I don't know, it's just the way it looks without these blocks looks kind of weird to me and I always like to replace it. It's up to you. Now it's time to put in the redstone that will actually be turning the farm on and off. This redstone only extinguishes the portals, it doesn't light them. We will do that part right after this. First you're going to go down to the AFK spot in the bottom of the drop chute and you're going to put two blocks right here just like that. And both of those blocks are going to have levers on them. From there you're going to place one, two, three blocks up like that with redstone on them. A block without redstone and another block with a repeater. Next, between your first two portals, you're going to go one, two, three blocks up and place your first observer. And on top of that observer, you're going to have two glass, just like that. A solid block with a redstone torch on front. And you're going to have a sticky piston facing this direction into that observer. On each side of the redstone torch, you're going to have these two pistons here, just like that. And those will be making sure that when the farm is off, there is no way that the portals can light. Next, you're going to come over here and place a temporary block and place three observers observing that space. Just like that. On each side, you're going to place a solid block here, just like this. And two solid blocks right there, just like that. And just like that on the opposite side. And you're going to place a dispenser facing towards the portal on the end of each of those lines of blocks. And finally, you're going to place redstone here all along here and right here and each of these dispensers will have a bucket of powder snow inside of them and that powder snow is meant to break the portals to test if you built that part right just go ahead and place a torch right there if this thing is working right then these two pistons should have retracted and these powder snows should be dispensed very rapidly once you're done testing go ahead and break those temporary blocks you're going to take this thing here and copy it over to the next two portals. And once you've copied it, go ahead and test it in the same way we tested the first one. Once you confirm that both sets of machines work properly, you're going to go ahead and build a staircase for redstone going down just like this on each side. And it's going to look sort of like a V pattern. Then you're going to continue the path down here closer to the farm just like this. And you're going to bring this path all the way down to meet up with this repeater. And it doesn't really matter how you connect it up, it just has to be connected in some way, shape, or form. If, for whatever reason, your signal isn't reaching all the way up to the tops and activating the machines, feel free to just add another repeater anywhere in the line. For instance, on the version of the farm where it's facing north, the signal didn't reach all the way up to the top, so I just added another repeater right here, just like that. Next, you're going to put the things on top of the portals that will be constantly lighting them. First, you're going to take some non-flammable blocks and go in between each set of portals, just like this. I prefer to use obsidian because it looks nice, but you can use any non-flammable block you like. And we're going to do that on both sides. Next, you're going to take an observer and have its output facing into the wall on one of the sides. And you're going to place observers going all the way to the other side, just like this. The reason for these observers is that the lava, which will be placed on top of the observers, will catch things on fire much faster if it has flashing observers underneath. This thing called lava ticking, or in this special use case, portal ticking, is something that can only be done on Bedrock Edition. Next, you're going to place barrels all along the sides. 
Now, the reason I chose barrels is because one, they're a full block, that two is flammable, three doesn't disappear when it catches on fire, and four, with all those other constraints, still has fire come on the sides. If you can find another block that meets all of those constraints, then feel free to use it. Go ahead and place the barrels all along the sides, just like this. And you're going to do this on both sides. Now, I don't actually know why, but this only works if there's two layers of barrels next to the lava. Next, you're going to place a non-flammable block all along the top of these barrels. This is so that the only part of the barrel exposed to air that's able to catch fire will be the parts facing towards the portals. Once again, you can use any non-flammable block you like, but I prefer to use obsidian. Next, we're going to place our lava. Now, lava flows three blocks away from the source block. So, we're going to have the lava four blocks away from each edge, and we're going to have six blocks in between each lava source. So, go one, two, three, four, place the lava there, and just make sure it flows all the way. Then from the source block, you're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the seventh block, you're going to have lava right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you're going to have lava right there. And with that, you're going to be able to fill up this entire top part with only three lava source blocks. Once you finish that, go ahead and repeat the whole process on the other two portals. Once you have both sides all put together, go ahead and place carpet all along the surfaces at the top just to make sure that no mobs can spawn up top. Because honestly, it is really annoying if they manage to spawn up here and then fall down onto you. Now, you might be concerned about this spot here where mobs can spawn, but in my experience, uh, no mobs ever spawn here. And if you had carpet there, it would catch fire and burn all the carpets up here. If you really want to, you can place a non-flammable block here, but in my personal use, I never do. Now, ordinarily, I'd tell you to go ahead and turn on the farm temporarily to test, but even if you did a test that lasted three seconds, you'd have ten zombie piglins jumping on you already, and that's not exactly ideal. So we'll wait to test that part until after the kill chamber is finished. Speaking of the kill chamber, that's what we're doing next. So from your AFK spot, you're going to go past the two blocks of walkway, the one block of wall, and you're going to place your floor one below the regular walking level in this spot right here. Once you have the ice in, go ahead and place your pistons right, right there, one on each side, just like that. And then you're going to place the blocks around this layer. It's going to be stairs right there, and then regular little blocks all around just like that from there you'll go ahead and build the glass chute all the way in just like that making sure to leave yourself an open space for getting in and out of the thing while building next you're going to build the redstone that will power these pistons First, you're going to build a path going out and around, just like this, with redstone on top. Then you're going to place two sticky pistons right here, facing the kill chamber, with an observer facing upwards, and a solid block right there. Next, you're going to place blocks all around, just like that, and remove the one in the center right there. You're going to bring a path around, just like that, bring it over, like this around like that and up like that you're going to place a target block here you're going to place a solo block right here and then you're going to start placing redstone so you need a redstone dust here a repeater on two ticks a redstone here a repeater on two ticks redstone dust going along here and a repeater on two ticks once all that redstone is in place go ahead and 
turn on the bottom lever, and the thing should start moving just like this. The odd timing of the pistons is to help items escape into the water stream. Next, you're going to come over here and build out just like this. Solid block here, glass here, then a solid block here, a 3 by 2 platform, just like that, and then a small staircase up, just like that. You're going to use a temporary block to put a sticky piston here, and redstone down, just like that, along here, just like that, and a repeater on four ticks. You're going to have a comparator facing this way and one facing that way. The purpose of this circuit here is so that you cannot have the top side of the farm powered without the bottom being powered first. If the Triton Killer ever stops for any reason at all, the portals will be shut off. That way, if something goes wrong, you can't accidentally lag out your world. Finally, we're going to add some pieces of decoration around the Triton Killer. So you're going to put four blocks here with some stairs, four blocks here with some stairs, and four blocks right here with some stairs. These decorations actually have a dual purpose. They will also be blocking water from spilling out from something we'll do later on. Now we're going to work on the water stream, and we'll take the items from the kill chamber to the storage system. So what we're going to do, break this block, means we don't actually need it. In fact, we need this to be blank space. And you're going to place ice right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then some more over here. One, two, three. So it's going to be three here and eleven all across here. And then you're just going to want to wall in this whole ice path just like that. On the sixth block of this water stream, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, you're going to have an upper slab right here. And then to the left of that, right here, you're going to have an empty space. And we're going to put a little kill chamber right here with a cactus just to kill any baby zombie piglins that end up in the water stream. So to build this kill chamber, you're going to come down from the ice. One, two, three, four, and one over. You're going to have sand on top, a cactus on top of that. And you're going to have sign up here. Then around the sand, you're going to have solid blocks with flower pots on them. So you don't accidentally place anything next to the cactus to make it break. And then you're going to have glass surrounding just like this. At the end of this ice path, we're going to have a bubble elevator right here with blocks around just like that. And we're going to bring it up eight blocks. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just like that. And this back part, we're going to bring up six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Next, place blue ice in a sort of mirror of this bottom area. It's going to be starting here. One, two, three, sideways like that. And then from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, horizontally, just like that. We're going to go ahead and leave the top alone for now. We're going to finish that up when we get to our sorting system. Next, you're going to put a front on the bubble elevator so water doesn't spill out. So first, you're going to have a top slab right here. Three blocks across like that. Blocks all up the sides. And glass all the way up to right here with another block set right there. Once you have all this put together, that is the bare minimum for putting in your water. So we're going to start over here. We're going to place the water in the stair there and in these two pistons here and here this water gives the perfect flow angle for items to escape while the thing is still running don't forget like i did you absolutely have to have a water source right here next to this target block do not forget to put this here you'll notice the way the water flows any small creatures that end up in the water stream will be pushed over to the cactus while items will be allowed to continue on the ice path next you're going to put water here and we'll push the items the rest of the way to the bubble elevator. Then you're going to place water all the way up the center of the bubble elevator, making sure that the bubbles reach the top. Once all of this is in place, now we can cover it all up with blocks so that it gives a nice proper pathway to walk on. So to do that, you're going to build a four wide path starting here, going all the way to the end of the water stream. Then right here, go ahead and finish off your drop chute. Now the water stream should be flowing all the way over like this and all the way up right there. Now it's time to build the sorting system. First thing you're going to do is place blocks all along here, a two wide extension to your platform that goes from the water stream all the way over to the glass. 
Then you're going to place a three high wall of double chests all along the new blocks you just placed. Once you have your chests in place, go ahead and go around back and put hoppers facing into every single one of them. Then you're going to use temporary blocks on top of the chests and place hoppers facing into those temporary blocks. Then put lines of hoppers going into each of these lines, going all the way past the ice, just like that. Then finally, one more set of hoppers facing into the ice all along here, just like that. Then you're going to start building the sorting circuit. To make things easier to understand, I'll build one copy of the circuit over here, and then I'll extend it all the way over across all the hoppers. So to make the sorting circuit, you'll place three blocks like that, block on the bottom, three blocks attached to the sides of that block, and then you will remove that block right there. Then you'll take a comparator reading from that hopper, three redstone dust right there, a repeater taking a signal from this block, and a torch taking a signal from that repeater. Then you can go ahead and extend the bottom all the way over, place your repeaters and your torches, then extend the top, put a line of comparators reading all the hoppers, and place redstone all along the empty space you see right here. That's the circuits for the sorting system all done. Now, before we go any further, don't forget to put your filter items into these top hoppers. First, you're going to want to rename half a stack of any item. Do whatever you want. I like to call them filter. Once you have that half stack named, go ahead and go to your first hopper closest to the water elevator. Place four filter items there and a stack of gold ingots right there. And then you can watch it go down to 41 items. And once it's at 41, this filter is completely done. Then you're going to go over here to the next four. Place your filter items, place a stack of nuggets. So it will make these four slices nugget sorters. And then for the last three, go ahead and place your filter items and rotten flesh. From here, we're going to finish our water stream. So first, you're going to build a border out for it with solid blocks here and slabs all along the top, just like that. And I like to plug up this area with solid blocks so that I know no items can fall into the system at the wrong spot. Then you're going to place two blocks here and here. Next, you're going to come over here, have a block down here, just like that, with a sand on top and a cactus with a carpet on top. You're going to surround that sand with solid blocks and an extra solid block here. You're going to have flower pots all around the cactus so you don't accidentally place blocks next to the cactus. Along the stream, you need an upper slab on the fifth block. So that's one, two, three, four, five. We'll have an upper slab right here. And then you'll need a second upper slab right here, just one block away from the cactus. Next, you're going to go all along this side and place cakes on every single spot. The reason we're using cakes is because the hitbox is just the right size and shape that items can slide along the water stream, but still be collected by the hoppers underneath. Once you have all this in place, you can go ahead and place water at the top here, and then place water on this block here on the other side of the slab. Then you're going to place some slabs on top of the water right here. This is to stop items from shooting into the air and landing on the side, maybe. Just keeps them all in the water stream. And just to make things look nice, you can place blocks all along the sides, just like that. And with that, your storage system is completely finished. And now, just some finishing touches around the farm. First off, I like to have a couple blocks here, just to make the chests look nicer. Then I like to have a sign here, reminding any users that the farm requires impaling tridents. Then, labels here and here, telling people what the levers do. And a label right here, telling people where to AFK. Speaking of AFK, I like to have four glass panes on the AFK spot so that the player can be completely centered. This makes sure that they will be in exactly the right spot. Then over here, I like to have ladders going up. These are so you can get on top just in case the water stream or item filters need maintenance. You'll probably never use them, but they're nice to have. And finally, if you haven't put anything in these pots yet, I always like to have cacti in them. For I don't know, for some reason, I just I just like the look of this and up here as well. And finally, once you have everything built from the portals to the storage and everything in between, you can go ahead and go over to the kill chamber and drop in four 
Impaling 5 Tridents. In Bedrock Edition, Impaling works on any mobs that are wet, which is why there is water in the kill chamber. This farm produces enough zombie piglins that every single one of these tridents is absolutely necessary. And it is very important that every single one has Impaling 5 on them. If you do not have four of these and they do not have Impaling 5, you will not do enough damage to kill all the mobs and you will end up lagging out the server. To get Impaling 5, I would suggest getting a Librarian Villager and re-rolling them until they get Impaling 5. Might take a while, but trust me, the gold output of this farm makes it absolutely worth it. Then go ahead and seal off the kill chamber. Once you've double and triple checked every portal, every stream, every circuit, every path, and every bit of glass to make sure that no zombie piglins can escape at all. It is now finally time to stand in your AFK spot with your trusty Looting 3 sword, turn on the Trident Killer, and turn on the portals. In just a few seconds, you will have a solid stream of zombie piglins falling into your kill chamber, dropping items. Those items will be flowing below your feet along with the XP. Baby piglins will be dealt with by the cactus, and you will be producing over 1,400 ingots worth of gold per hour, and you will be getting more XP than you will ever know what to do with. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I know I enjoyed making it. If you have any questions, comment below. If you have suggestions, go ahead and let me know. If you'd like to see more like this from me in the future, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell. And until next time, this is Psyker, signing out.